It's been a while since our last basic components video, right? Last time we have seen the operational amplifier and how to use it. Well now, this is a Schmidt trigger inverter, the CD4010-6B and that's what we will see in today's video. Before we start, please leave a comment in the comment section below with other basic components that you would like to see in the future. So guys, that being said, let's get started. This video is sponsored by GLC PCB. If you want professional made PCBs for a very low price, you should try their services. Their prototyping PCBs prices are so low that now for a lot of the small circuits that I design, I also make a PCB. That will keep my projects cleaner, more professional look and better performance than the homemade versions. So guys, upload the Gerber files to their webpage, review the design and starting from only $2, order 10 PCBs for your projects. What's up my friends, welcome back. In the last video we have seen that we could use an operational amplifier to compare signals and give a high or a low output depending on which input is higher than the other one. Well, the Schmidt trigger is used for kind of the same purpose but with something extra. For that, let's see first the comparator configuration of the amplifier. If you remember, we have two inputs and one output. If I place a potentiometer at the negative input, we can change the threshold value for when the signal at the output will pass to high or to low. We can lower or increase this threshold. So, let's say that we place a threshold of 3 volts using the potentiometer. Now, at the positive input, we have a signal that oscillates and we want to read that. So, we want each oscillation to become a square wave. Each time the input is higher than 3 volts, we have a high pulse at the output. That's pretty easy, right? But what if the input has noise? Let's do the same but now using this wave. It is the same signal but with some noise. Ok, so right at this oscillation, after the signal passes 3 volts, we have a little bit of noise and a small ripple that goes below 3 volts. That will result in a short low pulse at the output, which would be an error since we don't want that. This is the wave that we want and this is the one with noise. So that's why we use a Schmidt trigger, because it has two threshold voltage levels. One for the rising edge and the other one for the falling edge. Let's see the same signal now, but with two different threshold values. The input gets over 3 volts and now the output is high. No, I mean it's low, because it is also an inverter. If you want it to be a high pulse, just invert the signal 2 times. Ok, so then the input has the ripple and gets a little bit below 3 volts. But since it didn't pass below the second threshold, the output didn't change neither. So now we get the good signal that we want. So that is the main function of a Schmidt trigger, to convert a noisy signal to a good square wave that could be then read by a microcontroller or other digital components. Lots of ICs already have Schmidt triggers integrated in their inputs. We will look over some other options to create our Schmidt trigger, but first let's test it. I place the comparator configuration of the op amp on my breadboard. I now apply a 15Hz sine wave of 10 volts peak to peak. Sine wave is not the best signal for this example, since it will be half time over zero and the other half below zero, so it is very easy to set a threshold. But anyway, I place the threshold with the potentiometer at around 4 volts. Now here is the output. Each time the sine wave is above 4 volts, I have a high square pulse. But now, let's add some ripple to simulate noise. I increase the level of the noise and there you have it, now I have another small pulse. If I get the ripple even bigger, I get more and more error pulses and if you would want to count them, you will get a wrong amount. But now I do the same with the cd 40 b Schmidt trigger. And now I have good results. 
I have a Schmidt inverter, so I had to invert the signal two times in order to get positive poles. As you can see, now with even bigger ripples, I still have a good wave. But of course, if I increase the noise even more, I will eventually get errors as well, since now I pass both threshold values of the trigger. See the datasheet of your Schmidt trigger in order to know more about it. Ok, so let's say that you don't have a Schmidt trigger IC, you only have op amps. Well, here is a Schmidt trigger configuration made with op amps. Negative input connected to ground, so that implies that the V plus point will be ground as well. So we have these two equations. The current that passes R1 is the same that passes R2, since V plus is zero. So we get that V in divided by R1 is equal to negative V out divided by R2. So that tells us that V in is equal to negative R1 divided by R2 and multiplied by the V out, where V out could have the values of minimum and maximum supply voltage. In this case, let's say that the op amp is supplied to plus and minus 5 volts. So V out could be plus and minus 5 volts. Also, let's say that R1 is 1k ohms and R2 is 1.7k ohms. So we get that for the switch to be made, we need V in to be equal to 1k divided by 1.7k and multiplied by plus or minus 5 volts. So the switch will be made at plus minus 3 volts, right? So there you have it, we have two threshold values. When the input is rising from negative 5 volts to positive 5 volts, when we reach positive 3 volts, the output will be high. But on the falling edge, when we get from positive 5 volts to negative, when we reach minus 3 volts, the output will be low. And here is why the icon of a Schmidt trigger are these two threshold values. Ok, so what if we want different threshold values? Let's say that we want positive 3.5 volts and positive 2 volts. For that, we will use this configuration with three resistors. Here we have the equations for the rising and falling threshold values, and let's say that we supply the op amp with 5 volts. When V out is ground, we actually have R3 and R2 connected to ground, so there is a parallel of those two resistors. So we get a voltage divider like this. So let's say that the resistor values are R1 equal to 6.8k and R2 and R3 are equal to 10k. So we get the falling edge threshold of 2.1 volts. And when V out is high, so 5 volts, we get this equation. So with the same resistor values, we get a threshold voltage of 3.5 volts for the rising edge. So there you have it. The rising value is 3.5 volts and the falling threshold value is 2.1 volts. And we've got our Schmidt trigger made with op amps. Fine tuning the resistor values, you could set the threshold. Below you have links for my webpage for more examples and options on how to make a Schmidt trigger also using BJT transistors and resistors. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you have learned something new. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell in order to see future videos. And also click the like button like crazy and share this video with your friends. Remember, if you consider helping my projects, check my Patreon page as well. Thanks again and see you later guys.